Alright, so at this point we have a working full stack application with user authentication. So the last thing that we're going to do in this course is see how to release our app so that anybody in the world can access it, right? At the end of this section, you're going to be able to send your friends an actual URL that they can use to visit your website on their own computer. Alright, now in order to release our application, there are a few steps we're going to need to follow. The first thing we're going to need to do is build and serve our front end. Now we'll go over this in more detail shortly, but for now, just know that we're going to need to convert our front end and back end so that instead of being two separate applications that are running and communicating, they're both being served by a single server. You'll see what this looks like in just a minute, so don't worry if that sounds complicated. So once we've built and served our front end, we're going to set up a render account. And Render is the hosting platform we're going to be using to host our application. And it's great because it has a free tier. So once we've done that, we're going to be able to make a few small changes to our server. And finally, once we've got all of that out of the way, we'll be able to publish our app and see it running on the internet. So that's what we have coming up here. Let's jump in. All right. So the first step in getting our app ready to release is going to be to build our front end and have our front end files served by the back end. So, what this is going to enable us to do, essentially, is have both the back end and front end served on the same server, all right? And the main benefit of this is that it helps us simplify our architecture a little bit. So anyway, what this is going to look like is we're going to start off by opening up our terminal into the front end, and we're going to run the command npm run build. All right. So this is going to build our view project. And what we're going to see if we take a look at the front end directory now is that there's this DST directory that contains all of the compiled view code for our project. All right. So once that script is finished running, what we can do is copy this DST folder over to the back end. And as you'll see shortly, we can add a little bit of code to our backend to make it serve all of those files automatically. But before we do that, there's actually a few changes we want to make to our front end. So the first of those changes is going to be to open up our main.js file and we're going to add a redirect to our roots down here. So basically what we're going to do is when the user goes to the slash root, right? The regular home root, we're going to automatically redirect them to the products. So what we're going to do is say path and we're just going to say the slash root here. And then what we're going to do is add a property called redirect, and that's going to send the user back to slash products. So let's just save that and there we go. And you can always feel free to test this as well just by trying to go to the home root of our application now. But I'm going to keep moving. Now, the next thing we have to do is change the redirect URL that we specified in our product detail page. Right? Because currently the redirect URL is going to take us to our development application running in code spaces, and that's not what we want. Now, before we can actually know what this URL is going to be, we need to know what URL our application is going to be running on in production. So what you're going to want to do is go to dashboard.render.com, and this is going to require you to perhaps log in and create an account. But once you've done that, you should be able to go to the dashboard and we're going to create a new service on Render. And you can do that by clicking the new button and looking for web service. So we're going to select web service here. Now, the next step in this process is going to be to link this web service with a GitHub repo that we own. So what I'm going to do is link this with the GitHub repo that I've been developing on with code spaces. And that happens to be this one right here. I'm just going to click connect. And you may need to manually connect this to GitHub yourself. It's a pretty easy process. All right. So once you've done that, that should take you to a setup form. And the first thing it's going to ask you is what you want to name your web service. All right. 
Now I'm going to name my web service full stack view deployment. But you're probably going to have to name yours something else to make sure it doesn't collide. All right, so once you've specified the name, what we're going to do is select the region. I'm just going to leave the default selection there. And then you're going to select the branch that you want to deploy. Now, in my case, this is going to be this branch here but yours might be something else and you can even just create a new branch for this deployment if you want to. Next up. What we're going to do is specify the root directory and that's going to be backend, right? The backend is going to be the directory we'll want to run as a web service here. And finally, for the environment, we're going to select node. And then for the build command we're going to say npm install, double ampersand, npx babel src, right? And you're just going to want to type out what you see here. So what that will do is it will install all of our npm packages and it will build our backend into something that can be run by this platform. Okay? And last but not least, the start command is going to be the command that we'll use to start our server. So in our case that's going to be node and then build slash server dot js. Just make sure you type out exactly what's here because this should work for our current project setup. So anyway, now that we've done that we're going to click create web service down at the bottom. And by the way, you can always change all of those options later on. And it's going to take a minute or two to create our web service, but once it's done it's going to try and build our project and run it. Now, it's probably going to fail right now because we haven't actually prepared our project properly. But the thing we're interested in is going to be this URL up here at the top, right? This is what we're going to want to use as our redirect URL instead of what we had before. So let's copy that address. And if we go back to our IDE, what we're going to do is just replace our previous code spaces URL, right? All the way up to where we say slash products slash blah 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 with that new URL. And this is why we had to set up our project first to make sure that we had access to that name and to make sure that we had the URL. So now that we've done that, we should be able to build our front end and move it over to our back end. And then we'll commit this and deploy it with render. Alright, so that should be all we need to do on the front end. The next thing we're going to do is build our front end and see how we can host those files with our back end. Alright, so in order to have our front end files served by our back end, we're again going to have to run the build script inside our view front end. So you're going to want to open up a terminal in the front end directory and run npm, run build. And this will replace any old disk directory that you may have had. Alright, so once that script completes, what we're going to do next is we're going to copy that disk directory over into the root directory of the back end. And I already happen to have a disk directory there. I'm going to delete that. That was just from before. So let's paste the new one inside of there. And now we're going to open up the server file and add a few lines that will enable our server to statically serve those front end files. So here's what this is going to look like. Underneath where we said app.use for our images path, we're going to say app.use, express.static. All right, and inside there the arguments we're going to pass will be path.resolve and then we'll say underscore, underscore, directory name and then as a string dot dot slash disk. So this is just helping Express to locate those front end files. And then after this we're going to say as an object, max age 1y and a tag false. And this is just making sure that the front end serving works correctly. So don't worry too much about the details there. Alright. So now that we've added that app.use, the last thing we're going to do is go down to the bottom of our server, right before we call app.listen and we're going to say app.get. And the path here is going to be a star. Which basically will catch all of the other routes that weren't caught by the above handlers. Okay, and for the callback function here what we're going to do is just say response.send file and then we're going to say path.join underscore underscore. Directory name again and then dot dot slash dst slash index dot html. So what this is doing is it's going to send back the index html file, 
which is the main file that the client wants to load from our view app for each and every request that isn't handled by an API endpoint. All right. So now that we've added that, one more thing that we're going to have to do is allow ourselves to pass in the server port as an environment variable, right? This will allow the hosting platform to change the server port as well if it needs to. So what we're going to do is say, const port equals process.env.port or we're going to say 8000 and provide that as a backup. So now, instead of hard coding 8000 here, we can just say port and then we'll replace it here as well and say plus port. And that should be all we need to do here. So if you want to try this out, what you can do, is run only the backend directory by saying npm run dev. And what you should be able to do after that is open up the backend in the browser, just like we were able to open up the front end in the browser earlier. So let's take a look at ports after our app is up and running. And what we're going to do is just click this world icon, like so, and that'll take us to the front end. And again, this is being served by the server now. Instead of having a separate front end and back end running at the same time. Alright, so now that everything looks like it's in order on our server, we should be able to publish our app to render, by committing all of the changes we just made and I'm going to do that in another terminal here. Just by saying get add all and then get commit dash m and I'll say prepared app for deploy. Okay. Alright. So now we should be able to push these files and by the way, I'm pushing to that same branch that I selected when we set up our render project. So if there's a specific branch that your render project is watching, you're going to want to push to that one instead. Cool, so now that we've done that, we should be able to go back to our render dashboard and if you look under this events tab here. You should see that a deploy has been started, right? That's this one right here. And you can see the little loading bar and you can take a look at what's going on in the terminal just by clicking on the deploy link here. And sure enough, it'll look an awful lot like what we used to see in our terminal. So, let's just give that a minute or two to run and hopefully we should see a success message. If you see some sort of error, then that means we didn't do something quite right. And finally, if all went well. We should see server is listening on port 8000 printed out to this console. So what we should be able to do now is click on this full stack view deployment dot on render dot com thing up at the top and yours might have a different name, assuming that you used a different project name there. So I'm going to click on that and sure enough, we'll see our products page rendered. So let's just take a look at some of the other pages to make sure things work. And you can even try signing in if you want. Let's give that a try. We're going to click sign in to add to cart and let's enter in my test email again. There we go. And as a matter of fact, that's not going to work because if you take a look at the console, you'll see that we're getting an unauthorized continue URA error from Firebase. So basically all that means is we need to add the new URL for our deployed project to authorize domains, right alongside our code spaces URL. So let's click add domain, and we're just going to copy the URL for our site here. Alright, we'll say full stack view deployment on render.com. And now if we go back to our Firebase, we're just going to paste that as the domain, click add. So we should be able to try this one more time. I'm just going to click sign in to add to cart. I'm going to enter in my email. There we go. And when I click OK. And sure enough we see that it says a login link was sent to the email you provided. So feel free to continue in that flow. But that's about all we should need to do. So congratulations on building and deploying this full stack app with me. That is how you deploy a full stack view application on render. Thank you.